Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our Cola High School, where tonight you will be watching one of the biggest games in Los Alette Lions history. I'm Joseph Mack, and here along outside, Kevin Quigley, and we will be bringing you all the action here tonight from the Los Alette Lions Tuscola Warriors game here in the regional tournament. In their previous game, the Los Alette Lions defeated the Tri-County Titans by a score of 57 to 26. A huge victory for the Lions, sending them even further into the playoffs. Kevin, can you give us a little run through of that game? Right. So the, excuse me, the Lions had come off of a uh, loss in the last time that they played Tri-County back on December 14th. They, um, it was a really close game, but uh, they did in the game that we just played. They came out. And after just a little bit of a slow start, they just eventually shot away. Jody Artola hit several threes, and then all the Lions were shooting wonderfully all night long. And we ended up winning by the score of 57-26, to 26, so a major blowout against a team which had beaten us previously. Right. The score of the game earlier in the season was 41-36. to 36. The Lions defeated in a home game there on December 14th. And so ever since then, the Lions have been really hoping to get their revenge there on the Titans, and they did. They, they absolutely got it. And so here, the Lions have a huge chance to go even deeper into, pl into the playoffs. So here they're in the second round of the regionals, and they're going to be facing off against a very talented Tuscola team. This team ranked number one in our region. The Lions ranked number 10. Right, Tuscola's actually, they're not just ranked number one in our region, but also in our section. Right, So right. they're actually, they're favored to win the sectionals. So the Lions right now, major underdogs. Um, but they definitely, I mean, all week long, they've been getting keyed up. We've been having a lot of motivation, especially from Father Carlisle, the head coach. And they're definitely as ready as they can be for a game of this importance. That's right. The team has been prepping all week long, and all I've done is listen to these guys talk about how much they want they want to win this game. I know that this team really wants to win here tonight, and I have no doubt that they're going to leave it all out there on the court. Starting for the Tuscola Warriors here, we have number zero, Preston Brown. Number three, Jalen Quinn. Number five, Josiah Horton. Number 10, Colton Musgrave. And number 23, Jordan Quinn. So here we see number three, Jalen Quinn here. He is the big player and a big key that the Lions are gonna have to shut down for the Tuscola Warriors. That's number three, Jalen Quinn. He's a senior and he plays point guard. He's a six foot three senior, I might add. Um, very capable of handling the ball and the Lions are going to have to put a lot of pressure on him and they're going to really have to shut down his offensive game if they want to come away here with uh, a victory. So this game, going into it, the Lions are a heavy underdog. So they played against the number nine ranked Tri-County Titans and so and they obviously they crushed them. But the rankings didn't really show what the Lions really were. They should have been ranked a lot higher than 10, and the Titans should have been ranked a lot lower than 9. The main reason that they were ranked higher than the Lions was simply because of the Lions lost to them earlier in the season. This game, Tuscola undoubtedly the, you know, the favored team to win here in the game. They're ranked number one in, like we said, the section, and so it's going to be a dogfight for the whole game, and the Lions are going to have to stick with them. This is not going to be a game where we're going to see a 20, 30-point blowout like we did last game against the Titans. This is going to be a game the Lions are going to have to fight the entire way through if they want to come away with the win. Number 10, Colton Musgrave shoots there. Number zero, Preston Brown comes away with the rebound. Right, so a big aspect of the pregame scouting report for Tuscola is that a lot of their points come off of offensive rebounds. 20 to 30 points will come off of offensive rebounds, especially with Jalen Quinn, such an athletic rebounder. Um, it's just such a big point for the Lions. It's just boxing out as well as defense. That's right. Right now we see the Warriors starting out, both the Warriors and the Lions, starting out extremely dedicated on defense. They're really not giving anything up. The Lions obviously saw two points fall into the basket there for Preston Brown. He got left open under the hoop, but very good defensive effort there from the Lions. Joe Martin drives in and scores. So 
sorry about this. There's a lot of noise here. The crazies are very loud. It's an extremely loud environment in here right now. And so Kevin and I are just kind of trying to maneuver our way to get as far away as we can from them. Obviously, it's great to have them here, but this, these microphones are picking up way too much. Joseph Deratola tries to get it off there. Knocked out of bounds. Coach Basia calls a timeout, and that might save it. I think we played with some of our microphone settings here, and so hopefully things get better. Sorry about that. It was about a 30-second period or so, and we weren't saying anything because we were trying to move around. So timeout called here by Coach Basia. Score 4-2 to two right now to Skula in the lead. But I think what we're starting to see here, I mean, don't get, I mean, tell me, correct me if you think I'm wrong, but going into this game, I think the Lions and the Crazies and really the whole school, they kind of view Tuscola almost as like a, like a, a god team. Like they were too good to be beaten. And so I think that what we saw there when Joe Martin drove baseline and scored was, oh wow, like we can, we can beat these guys. This is, this is a winnable game. Right, it kind of it kind of loosened up La Salette because if you ever watch them in warm-ups, um, almost every single time the other team looks outwardly more energetic. The Lions are always more just calmer um, in warm-ups. But then, uh, you know, Jalen Quinn, like I saw him on the first possession, he was really, uh, you know, getting excited, you know, really distracting on defense for Steve. Um, but then I think that you're right, that Joe Martins, too, did kind of open up the energy for the Lions. Right. Warriors here miss a three-point opportunity. Dylan Wilson tries to tie it up there. Foul's going to be called on him. I guess he got a little bit of the of the wrist there, and so it'll be ball inbounded here by number ten, Colton Musgrave. Inbounded here, number five, Josiah Horton with it now. Horton defended by Deister. Quinn gets it over to the corner there. We see number 10, Colton Musgrave, he his shot. Shot from the corner, number zero, Preston Brown. That shot is good, so the Lions down now, six to two. Ball stolen away here by Quinn. Athletic move down low. And just like that, Lions are down six points here, eight to two. As I'm sure you all know, uh, the regional tournament is single elimination. So uh, for all those seniors out there on the Lions team, um, Steve Deister, Derwin Wilson, all those guys, um, this is a must win game for them because if they don't win this game, that is the end of their career as, the li as a Lion. So this is um, not just for the whole team, not just for the school, but especially for the seniors. There's definitely some extra importance um, as to why they need to win this game. That's right. And the Lions aren't going to help themselves if they go down early here. Obviously right now, six points is not a huge deficit, so they need to work with it when, when, you know, while they can. They cannot sit back and watch this Warriors team go up by 20 points before they decide to start putting the ball in the hoop themselves. Number three, Jalen Quinn, we had mentioned it earlier here. He is a excellent basketball player, uh, commit to Loyola, I believe. Is that correct? Right, yeah. So D1 talent um, from him. Uh, the, they just blew the whistle. The referee had to clear something up with the scorekeeper. But yeah, like you were saying, right, he's going to a Division One college for basketball. He's obviously got game. That's right. We can see the Warriors here bringing this press. Nothing that the Lions haven't dealt with already so far this season. Joseph Deratola fouled by the Warriors, and so it'll be ball out of bounds here, Lions ball. Inbound it to Steven Deister. Steve bringing the ball around, pops back out. Gets it over to Joseph Martin. Joe Martin drives deep down inside, no good. Charles Prather tries to rebound, isn't able to get it. Warriors coming back down here with it on offense. Jalen Quinn fires from three, no good. Rebound, Charles Prather. Lions moving the ball off the court here. Joseph Deratola gets it off to Steven Deister. Steve, back to Joseph Deratola again, and they're over the half, uh, half court line, sorry. Steve passes to Joseph Deratola at the corner. 
over to Wilson. Lions moving the ball around here, some good ball rotation. Inside, over to Joseph Martin. Over to Joseph Deratola again. Steve drives inside, puts it up, no good. It'll be going Warriors direction. Easy basket underneath for the Warriors, number 10, Colton Musgrave. Warriors go up 10 to two here over the Lions. The Lions cannot start out in a hole. If they do that, their chances of winning are dwindled to just about zero. It's gonna be hard enough to stick with this team, nonetheless come back against them. Right, right. I'm just, and you know, not just stopping them on defense, but getting started on offense is what they need to do because um, it's not even that their defense has been atrocious, it hasn't been the greatest, but it's been um, all right considering. Warriors let a three-pointer fly. They go up 13 to two over the Lions. Jody, Jody Artola seeming to have a little bit of trouble uh, gathering in the ball. That's the second time that he's kind of bobbled it um, over on the wing, but he's been able to maintain control both times. Poked away by Quinn. Out of bounds off of the Warriors line ball. Eamon Martin getting subbed in for Charles Prather, so I think that the coaching staff willing to sacrifice a little bit of uh, rebounding just for more guard attack on the outside. That's right, the Warriors have done an excellent job with defending the arc so far this game. Even Martin, hesitation, decides not to shoot from the corner there. Martin on the corner here on the wing, looking for a pass here, finds his brother Joe Martin. Derwin, man, these Lions are taking a long time. Obviously this Warriors defense is very good. And I don't think that we can say, like most other teams where the Lions are gonna out-condition them. This Tuscola team, I don't think this is one of those teams. I think this Tuscola team is very conditioned. And so, Lions aren't going to be able to rely on a tired Warriors defense slacking off later on in the game. They're going to have to go at it full force here. So right now with Eamon Martin in the game, I'm just really hoping that he'll be able to um, spark some offense. He's definitely uh, does that a lot. But the Lions unable to stop Jalen Quinn from going up with a putback. So that's more just of those points scored off of offensive rebounds that we were talking about. Steve Deister drives in, gets the ball swung around. Durham Wilson has it, dribbles up to the top, but gets it back to Joe D'Artola in the corner. These Lions, they've been doing a decent job of moving the ball around, but unable to put the ball in the hoop. This Warriors defense has really been there every step of the way. There's gonna be a foul called on number 11 for the Warriors, James Parsley for a push. So Joe Dottolo will inbound the ball from yeah. almost making it work. I was a little confused, the Warriors fans and everybody, they were all clapping and I was like, Did, didn't they? I was just confused. So yeah, foul called there on the Warriors, so Lions ball out of bounds. Lasolette with two fouls so far in this game. Tuscola with one. Thirty seconds left in the first quarter. Lions down by eleven points, thirteen to two. 
13 points, sorry, right? Yeah. Th oh, yeah. 13 mm. points, 15 to 2. Lions trying to get it off. Nothing. Tuscola down on the other end. Get up a last second shot, and that is good. Jordan Wilson with the ball here. Last second desperation shot, no good. And so just like that, the Lions come out of this first quarter just absolutely, ugh. They get their, yeah. Whew. Not a good, not a good first quarter here for the Lions, and you wonder how much of it they can control because they're passing the ball pretty well on offense, and they're playing as you know pretty hard on on defense, and so you almost wonder how much of this they can control. But still, got to hand it to Tuscola. They're obviously the much better team here. Uh, Lost a lot, definitely the underdog going into this game, and so that shows right now on the scoreboard here, 15 point deficit. Lions down 17 to two. Right, uh, when we played Tri-County, um, one thing that I really noticed was that the Lions' shots were all going in. All, right. all of their shooters were having a good day. And today, I don't know if we could say that that isn't the case just because we haven't there haven't been any yet. shots. Right. Um, Joe Martin took one three that looked pretty good, but it didn't go. Um, but other than that, there haven't been really any open shots that have been taken. Right. So there right. is that little bit of hope that maybe just if we can exploit the defense a little bit better and get some more open looks, we will be able to get something going. Um, number five, Omar Ortiz is in for Jody Artola. Um, he might be able to help quell the turnovers a little bit more. Miscommunication on offense here. Steven Dyser passes to a cutting Joe Martin who doesn't realize that the ball is being passed behind him and so it'll be a Warriors ball. Jalen Quinn is a very good ball handler. We're gonna have Probably our best defender, Omar Ortiz here, gonna try to shut him down. We'll see how that works. Inside, number 32, Haven Hatfield. Able to get that one to go inside. So the school takes a 17 point lead, 19 to two here. Joe Martin drives inside, pulls up, and that is good. The Lions get their second basket of the game here, all from Joe Martin so far tonight. He's got four of the Lions, four points. The Warriors, they like to do this baseline thing. If you look, they like to feed it down low, get it over there. They like to play in that corner. Steven Dyster able to come away with the steal here. Down low. Steven Dyster is going to get the call and the point. So, Lions here, tack another two onto their points. I was a little bit nervous on, the, on yeah. that call because Josiah Horton, he definitely looked like he was set. Um, Horton, a sophomore, but definitely in there, one of the better players for Tuscola. Right. Steven Dyster hits his free throw. For the Lions, down here now, a score of 19 to seven with six minutes and 56 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. Eamon Martin comes away with the steal. Steven Dyster sets for three, no good. Rebound, Eamon Martin. Amen. back out to Joe Martin. Dylan Wilson steps from three, no good. Overshoots it. Tuscola ball here down the other end. Tuscola misses. Lions knock it out of bounds. And so the remaining Warriors ball, but good effort there by the Lions. They were able to prevent another easy two points there from number 32, Haven Hatfield. Right, Los Salette's definitely starting to get some breaks go their way. It's just seemed like that entire first quarter they couldn't pull down a rebound they couldn't get a turnover and right there we saw two turnovers back to back nice job by Derwin Wilson able to save the ball from going out of bounds Omar Ortiz pressing it up here over to Joe Martin Joe drives inside pump fake out to Steven Dyson Steve sets for three fires that is good Lions now down only nine points to Tuscola and you can see that the momentum in the building has switched already Lions down nine points, 19 to 10. You can see this fan base here for the Lions. The crazies going nuts right now. And the team also very excited. They're within nine points. And for a team that's such that you know, as good you know, has such good shooters as the Lions, nine points. That's, not, that's three not, possessions. That's right, three possessions. Yep. 
The Tuscola fans right now silenced by that three from Steven Deister. Um, I mean, going back to the huddle, Joe Martin was just jumping and the whole bench was excited and Tuscola was finally being quieted down. Um, I mean, just watching the game, their best player, Jalen Quinn, is also their most, uh, he's also their most vocal. Every time that they get something to go their way, he's able to really bring energy to their team. And that's probably one of the keys as to why they've been able to play so well this season. So maybe the Lions can take some of that. And if Joe Martin, Steven Deister, if they can start getting excited, then the rest of the team will too. That's right. Number three, Jalen Quinn has a brother on the team. Number 23, Jordan Quinn. He's a sophomore this year. Warriors pushing it up here. We're going to need to see some more steals that the Lions want to get, get you know, motivated, get pumped up again. And we just saw another one. Omar Ortiz, oh, almost comes away with it. The Warriors able to steal it back from the Lions as Omar Ortiz gets stuck in traffic. And Omar might be the key to a good game here for the Lions as he has just such quick hands. He could steal the ball from anyone on the team, including now as we've seen number three, Jalen Quinn. Omar trapped here, decides to break through it, drives down low, pops it back out again, and the Lions are here set in their half-court offense. So Martin drives baseline. We got a blocking foul called here on number three, Jalen Quinn. I believe that is Quinn's first foul of the game. And so it'll be Lions ball out of bounds. Tuscola now with three fouls so far in the game. Lions with only two. Joe's going to have to inbound here. Gets it into Derwin Wilson. And now the Lions are rolling again in their offense. So let's see what the Lions can bring here. They're down 11 points. Steven Deister, top of the key. Trying to set the play up. Lions switching it around. Joe Martin fires from three, no good. It goes out of bounds off the top of the backboard here. And we're gonna have a substitution. Joseph Deratola coming in for Eamon Martin. And I think that could be big because Joseph Deratola is probably the best player on the Lions team when it comes to catching and shooting the ball from three point range. Right, and Eamon, he did have a uh, nice rebound, a nice steal. But other than that, he wasn't really contributing that much on those last couple possessions while Joe D'Artola had been um, doing a lot, I thought, earlier in the game. So definitely the right call, I think, from the coaches to put Joe back in. If you watch this Lions defense, it is really playing so well. It's just all so synchronized, the way they're moving around. You can really tell that they're all into it and that they're not, you know, they're going 100% on defense right now. Ball goes out of bounds off of Derwin there. He steps out, I should say. Tuscola here with the ball, and Steve pokes it loose. I think that Jalen Quinn might start be starting to realize that he doesn't want to hang around Steve or Omar very long because once he does, they just tend to steal the ball from him. Lions swinging it around here. Omar down low, Joseph Deratola, beautiful reverse layup. Lions down now, nine points, 21 to 12. Number zero, Preston Brown fires from three. He hits, Tuscola goes up 24 to 12 now, 12 point deficit here for the Lions. Lions able to break that press, Steven Deister sets from three and he hits right back at him again. Lions down here by nine, 24 to 15. And so the Lions found themselves down by a decent amount early in the game. They kind of got themselves into that hole and now they're starting to realize that they can stick with this team. Inside number five, Josiah Horton goes up and hits his jumper. Lions back at it here on their offensive side of the court. See if they can level, you know, even the even it out there after that shot. Jalen Quinn comes away with the ball down low, and he does a very good job of drawing the foul off of number five, Joseph Deratola. Deratola kind of fell into exactly what he wanted him to do. 
so Jalen Quinn will head to the free throw line to shoot here. Quinn hits his free throw. Tuscola goes up now, 29 to 15. 14 point deficit here for the Lions. So that's 10 points for Quinn, but Steven Deister right behind him with nine points. So Steve definitely able to hang in there with a the bigger, much bigger player. Steve down low, draws the foul, beautiful. Excellent job there from Steven Deister. That'll be Tuscola's fourth foul of the game so far. Lions also with four. Tola gets it inside to Omar. Omar over to Wilson, and the Lions running their offense again. Ball, ah, ball passed from Omar Ortiz to Derwin Wilson, just outside of Derwin's reach. Ball falls out of bounds, and so Warriors ball here. Tuscola pushing it up the floor. Number zero, Preston Brown sets and shoots no good. Lions come away with it. That could have been a devastating possession there for the Lions if they had let that go the wrong way. Ah, oh, dang it, I spoke too soon. I really, I do have a thing. I just I jinx everything. So you need to start saying stuff from now on. You, you need to start like complimenting the Lions or something so that it doesn't go the other way. Omar with a great steal uh, down low to take the possession back for the Lions and Bring the ball back down court as Joe Martin drives baseline. He loves to do that, loves to get that shot down. Joe D'Artola for three, no good. Duran Wilson attempts to get the rebound but is unable to. But a good thing that I did see was that the paint was wide open so Tuscola might be getting a little bit tired and they just might be underestimating the Lions and just neglecting to cover up those rebounds because there was only one Tuscola rebounder there. I hope so because the Lions are certainly not getting tired right now. They seem to be playing at full force, and they have been so far for the whole game. Jalen Wilson gets it over to Omar Ortiz. Ortiz pumping, drives inside, beautiful move, unable to get it to go. And we're going to have a foul called here on La Follette. Foul's on number five, Omar Tees. It'll be Warriors ball out of bounds. Eamon comes in for Derwin Wilson. Derwin's been really doing a lot for the Lions, rebounding and just definitely um, down on the defensive side of things. But Eamon definitely brings that offensive side of the game that Derwin um, kind of lacks a little bit. Inside, number 23, Jordan Quinn. Nice move down low and he's able to score another bucket for Tuscola. Warriors up now, 33 to 15 over Los Lec. Clock winding down, 40 seconds remaining here in the first half of play. Steve drives inside, pulls back, over to Omar. Omar sets and shoots, no good, short there. Omar comes up with his own rebound, takes it down low, passes back out to Eamon Martin, and Eamon's gonna be called out of bounds there. That's the fourth time, or third or fourth time so far this game that a lion has been called for just simply stepping out of bounds, uh, just being sort of unsure as to where he is on the court. And so if the Lions could pick that up, that would be very beneficial to them. I mean, against a team like the Warriors, if you're watching them, when the Lions are on offense, the court just looks so much smaller just because the Warriors' defense is so good at taking up all the space that there is. Down low, Tuscola, number 23, Jordan Quinn, goes up and gets the foul. He'll head to the free throw line.
at the free throw line. First shot is good, and that will be the only shot he gets. So Lions ball out of bounds now. Lions are down 36 to 15. It's been a while since they've scored, and so it'd be nice if they could score here. Not much time left. Steve tries to get it down low to Omar, but isn't able to get it before the clock expires. And just like that, Lions go into halftime down here by a lot, 36 to 15. So 36-15, the score here after the first half of play. The Lions, you can be sure, regardless of whatever the outcome of this game is or regardless of whatever the score now is, which is obviously a decent deficit here that they're going to have to work against, they will certainly try their hardest in the second half of play. There's no way they're going to just give up and play sort of, you know, give 50%. They're going to give all they've got for the second half and so we'll see where that puts them at the end of the game we'll see what the score is at the end of the game who knows maybe they come back who knows maybe they make it a close game or maybe they lose by a decent amount but regardless of whatever you know the score is at the end of the game you can be sure that this team's going to give it all they've got so here we go end of the first half of play here scores 36 to 15 to school over La Salette again I'm Joseph Mackin here with Kevin Quigley and we will be back with you after a short break to bring you some scoring statistics and the second half of action. Thank you so much for watching.
Welcome back to the second half of play here at Arcola High School as the Lions face off against the Tuscola Warriors. Once again, I'm Joseph Mack and joined here by Kevin Quigley. Kevin, can you give us a quick rundown of statistics, scoring statistics for the first half? Right, so um, entering the second half, Los Let's down by 21 points, 36 to 15. Uh, for the Lions, Steven Deister, the scoring leader with nine points. Uh, two of those um, shots they made were both threes. Uh, very good to see. Joe Martin's uh, falling behind him with four points, and then Joe Deartola, the other score for the Lions with two points. So the other um, players for the Lions that normally score, Eamon Martin, uh, uh, Charles Prather, they just haven't really been scoring tonight. Um, but maybe we'll see that open up in the second half. For uh, Tuscola, we've definitely just seen number three, Jalen Quinn. Uh, he has 10 points. He's followed closely behind by his brother, Jordan Quinn, with nine points. So um, they're really bearing the brunt of the work for Tuscola, and they've really just been uh, successful in uh, quelling the Lions' offense as well as um, just really, just really uh, playing well on their own side of the court with the ball. That's right. So I talked to Father Carlisle quickly at halftime, and he told me that if we can't rebound, we can't win, and that is so true um, what, they're, what he's saying. If, you know, if we're not going to be able to rebound the ball, that's so many points that they're going to be scoring against us. And so that you know the Lions obviously have to pick that up. And that's something that, although it does come with height, they can also do it, you know, out-rebound other teams, and which they've done so far this season. They've out-rebounded teams that are taller than they are. Uh, I quickly asked Coach what he thought going into the second half, and he just said that they're really just taking everything out of us. Uh, you know, making us, you know, they're, they're playing such good basketball in general that we aren't really able to play that much good basketball. So, you know, the Lions, they've got definitely stuff to work on here. I don't think that energy and effort is one of the problems. I think that these Lions uh, are locked in right now, and so we'll see how they do uh, going into this uh, second half here. We'll see how they come out. Right, in a game like this against as talented an opponent as they're facing off right now, just the small mistakes very easily lead to points. Just if you step out of bounds, which we saw happen a couple times, that will very easily lead to um, two points after the turnover. Right. So uh, that's, that's what the Lions have to do is they have to minimize those tiny mistakes, which is very much easy, uh, more easily said than done. That's right. Jordan Quinn fires from three, no good. Teratola tries to rebound, isn't able to get it. Inside, Jordan Quinn goes down, and he scores. So Tuscola goes up 38-15 now. Steve pushing the ball up the court. Steve goes back to the top of the key here to set some stuff up. Gets it over to Joseph Deratola. Deratola sets and fires from three, no good. Rebound by the Lions. Getting out to Joseph Deratola, luckily, the ball was tipped by the Warriors, but their lines are able to retain possession. Foul called here on number three, Jalen Quinn. Steven Dyster draws that one, and so it'll be out of bounds here, Lions ball. That'll be the second foul of the game here for Jalen Quinn, and so that means no players so far this game are in any sort of foul trouble. Steven Dyster also with two. So again, no player on either team in any sort of foul trouble. Tuscola here with one foul already, and then Lions obviously have none so far this half. Deratola gets it over to Joe Martin. Lions swinging it around. Steve inside, puts it up, gets that one to go luckily, but that wasn't even what he was going for. He was clearly going for the foul there, but he was able to make enough separation from his guy that he was able to put that thing in the hoop. Jalen Quinn. Outside here, gets it into his brother Jordan Quinn. Jordan down low, no good. Prather tries to rebound, and it looks like it'll stay Warriors ball. Warriors number 10, Colton Musgrave will inbound here. Inbounded to number zero, Preston Brown, who hits the three. Lions 
with it here on offense. Let's see if they can put a dent in this deficit right now. They're down 41 to 17. It's just so frustrating to watch the Lions move the ball around but not, then not be able to penetrate in just because the Warriors are just so quick on their defense that they, the Lions just can't seem to get an open shot. So the open shots that they have gotten have, all, have almost all come in transition just when um, the defense is discombobulated because once the Warriors defense does get set up, there's very little loss that can do. That's right. Warriors number three, Jalen Quinn drives inside. Picks up another two for Kostola. Lions circling the ball around here. Steve drives, and it looks like he'll step out of bounds. Down here on the Tuscola side, their offensive side of the court. They're working it around here. We can see they're spread out, really spread out, and that's forcing some big exposures down low, which they seem to be taking advantage of. Quinn, pump fakes, drives inside, gets it to go. Quinn, an unstoppable force right now for Tuscola. He has 14 so far this game. His finishing abilities around the rim are really, I'd say, what defines him. He's really able to drive in and score sort of whenever he wants to. Joe Martin takes it down low. He'll be called for the travel. And Coach Bays is going to call a timeout. 30 second timeout here called by the Lions and so they obviously have a lot to talk over they've been really unable to score so far definitely not able to match with Tuscola at halftime I saw some of the Tuscola fans now if I think I've heard this correctly Tuscola is kind of like La Salette in that they're a really small school I think they only have like 200 some students uh, and so the, and so some of the the guys from their student section came over and started talking to some of our guys, just asking about the everyday life at Lost Let. The idea of a boarding school was very foreign to some people. Uh, and so they were just asking sort of what like the schedule looked like at school and stuff like that. Right, it's kind of interesting, not just to school is here, but also the Tri-County team is here as well to watch the team that beat them. I'm sure they're hoping that we get beaten. That's right. Some of the players leaving that game were not, uh, not very happy, to say the least. They were all up and mad, so I'm sure they are hoping that the Lions will take a loss here. Inside, Charles Craven deflected out of bounds. Knocks it away from Preston Brown, so it'll be Warriors basketball. Warriors moving the ball around. Lions are going to have to come up with some way here to stop them. That foul's on number 32, Charles Prather, um, in that mix up going for the ball he ended up fouling the Warriors that's his first however none of the lines are in foul trouble they've been doing um, I mean I guess you could call it a good job I'm not really sure of spreading their fouls out there's no one that has more than two um, either way fouls have not been a problem so far uh, for La Salette which is good especially since um, you kind of get desperate playing a team when you're down by this much you might get start desperate um, get desperate uh, start reaching but they haven't done that uh, at least they haven't done so illegally Lions down here 30 points 47 to 17 sorry did I just say sorry I said 30 points yeah 30 points right yeah yeah 
Sorry, I'm not. Sometimes I, you know, you're the math guy, not me. <laughs> sometimes I have to check. It's, but this isn't that bad because it's 47-17. That's easy to do. Sometimes I have to look over when it's more complicated and get your help on it. Steven Dicer comes into the game for Omar. That was Steve's first rest of the game. Um, he was out for about two minutes. Hopefully that will refresh him. It looks like some subs are coming on for the Warriors. Inbounded here by Joseph Deratola to Steven Dyster. Steve gets it over to Eamon Martin. The Lions back in their half-court offense here. Darrell Wilson drives inside. And we're gonna have a foul called here on Tuscola, number four, Easton Cunningham. So I would say that until Tuscola goes into the bonus, uh, once they get seven fouls and then, or unless it's a shooting foul on the Lions, I wouldn't say that um, a foul on the floor is really a good thing just because the Warriors have been doing a really good job covering those inbound plays. Right, right. Steve pump fakes inside, pulls up, good. Steven Dyson now with 11 points so far in this game. Steve the only scorer so far this half for the Lions. This whole third quarter they've only scored four points, both coming from him. Sorry, my mistake there. Steven Dyson has 13, not 11. Number four, Easton Cunningham rattles in a three. Or sorry, looks like that was, uh, was that a deep, sorry, yeah, rattles in a three there. Lions able to pick it up once again. They're kind of bobbling with the ball a little bit. They're having some, you know, seriously struggling here to keep it. And that just speaks to this Tuscola defense. It's really just been playing so well. Coach Spazia calls a full timeout. He's probably searching for ways to get the Lions offense running because I, um, they just aren't able to do anything at all this quarter. Um, in the second quarter, they did get started a little bit. They were stopping Tuscola, and they were creating turnovers. They were scoring points. And just this quarter, nothing's worked. It's just looked just like the first quarter. Lions come out of halftime here. You can definitely tell that they are not, the players are not as uh, enthused as they were going into the beginning of this game. They've gotten themselves in a hole here that's almost impossible to dig themselves out of. Like I said earlier, uh, it's hard enough to, to, be, to be able to stick with this team. Uh, it's certainly even harder to dig yourself out of a hole, especially one this deep, 31 points deep to be exact. Let's see if the Lions can even dent this lead. Eamon Martin gets it over to Derwin Wilson in the corner. Derwin over to Joseph Deratola. Steve shoots a three, no good. That one comes up short. Warriors here taking it back down on offense. Number three, Jalen Quinn gets fouled by number 24, Joseph Deratola. That's Joe's third foul. He's the only Lion approaching foul trouble right now. And taking him out of the game here. Definitely not what the Lions want. Steven Dyster comes away with the steal. Back down the other end. Gets that one to go. Lions break 30 now. They're down by 29. Timeout called here by Tuscola's head coach. And the Lions will get a chance to talk things over. It was looking very hopeful earlier in the game. We saw the Lions respond and kind of stick within that nine point range of Tuscola. And now they've really just been sort of, you know, for every six points Tuscola scores, they score two, uh, which is certainly not obviously what the Lions wanted. And it's really kind of hard for them to 
dig themselves out of this. The, the first quarter is the Lions' highest scoring quarter, just on average, followed by the fourth quarter. And then the second and third quarters come in last place. And so the Lions, if, you, if you're looking at a diagram, it, it, it's like it, it comes down and it makes a, it's almost like a U. They start off good, they dip down, and then they finish off pretty well. And so that's sort of, we've sort of seen that. That's kind of been pretty accurate so far this game. Played pretty well in the first quarter, not so well in the second or third, and now they're going to be heading into the fourth quarter pretty soon. Lions able to stop that shot, but they do foul in the process. So number 32, Tom, uh, Haven Hatfield, will be heading to the line to shoot two free throws. First free throw, no good. Second free throw, no good either. So, Steven Deister bring the ball, ball off the floor here for the Lions. They've got about 30 seconds or so to make something work. Let's see what they can do. Ball pass to Joseph Zaratola, pump fake. Drives inside. Over to Amon Martin. Down low, Steven Deister tries for the reverse layup, no good. Out of bounds off of the Lions, and so it'll be Warriors ball going the other direction. Inbounded here, Jalen Quinn bringing the ball up the floor here for the Warriors. Quinn inside, gets the ball up, and that is good. Again, like I said, his ability to really finish around the rim is one of those big things, those key things, that and his ball handling. And, you know, obviously there's more as well, but those things really define him. His ability to finish around the rim is just phenomenal. He can hit floaters. He can, do, you know, do all sorts of moves down low in the paint. And so it's, it's impressive to watch him play. Obviously, it's kind of annoying to watch him play when you're on the other end of it and you're taking the brunt of the, uh, the points and all that stuff being scored on you. But like we said... Jalen Quinn, number three, he's a senior this year, and he is a Loyola commit. So D1 talent, like you said earlier, and so that's definitely showing so far this game. I know I mentioned it earlier in the game, but just in case some of you weren't watching, but um, because the regional tournament is single elimination, if the Lions lose this game, um, that will be the end of their season. So all those seniors that you see out there, Jody Artola, Derwin Wilson, Steven Deister, Daryl Wang, Omar Ortiz, and Joe Martin. This could be their last game unless something, I guess, miraculous happens. Um, I don't know, maybe both Quins get technicals and leave. Um, I think that we may be seeing the last games from these players. Here's a Teratola, inbounds to Steven Deister. Gets it over to Eamon Martin. Eamon back to Steve. Lions working the ball here in the final quarter of this game. Eamon Martin fires from three, no good. Rebound to Scola. James Parsley. Gets it over here, Warriors passing the ball around. Number four, Easton Cunningham left open. He hit a three, I believe, earlier in the game. Doesn't hit this one. Lions back at it here on offense. Drives low, drives down low I should say, and he's able to draw the foul, so he'll head to the free throw line. Oh. 
First free throw is good. Second free throw is good as well, so Steven Deister puts the Tuscola lead now at 29. And we can see that Tuscola has put in a lot of their substitutions so you know, into the game. I can bet that Coach Basia will not be doing that, at least not for the next couple minutes. And so we'll see how the Lions starters here play against the secondary squad from the Warriors. Free throw, no good for number four, Easton Cunningham. Matthew Romero, the junior, comes in for Derwin Wilson. Lions fighting for the rebound here. Steven Dicer pokes it out of bounds. Scola inbounds, and they're on their way here in their offensive set here. Into number 42, Chris Boyd. Charge taken there from by the Lions, and so it'll be Lions ball out of bounds. Joe Martin right there with the charge. It was kind of an interesting one because it wasn't even on a shot attempt. It was just it's a Scola player reach the ball out and knock Joe, Dar uh, Joe down, so he was able to draw that foul. That's right. Lions moving the ball around here. We'll see if they can cut down on this lead, obviously. Big lead here for Tuscola. Up 29 points right now. We'll see if they can cut that down. Inside, Matthew Romero. Passes over to Charles Prather, over to Steven Deister, and the Lions are moving around here. Steve shoots from three, no good. Rebound to Scola, and they're coming back down the ball with the ball here on offense. Now this game is starting to get very monotonous here with this second string group of guys from Tuscola. They're also very good offensively, but the Lions have been really have been shutting them down defensively just because these are the, I'm sure this the squad here is younger guys and the Lions are pretty good defensively and but the same thing here Tuscola very good on defense as well and so there's basically there's little to none little to no scoring going on right now in the game Steve unable to get that one Charles Prather tries to fight for the rebound isn't able to get it right I think that the Lions just are really deflated just knowing that their season's about to end because none of the none of the players at all for Lasalle have scored this quarter except for Steven Deister with his eight points. Um, this entire half, he's the only scorer for the Lions. That's right, Lions unable to get just about anything to work here. They have not been very strong on rebounding, certainly, but uh, they definitely could use could be better on offense. Time out call Coach Fazy. I'm sure he's going to have some stuff to say about that. Coach Spazia has Gus Blood and Daryl Wang check into the game, so a little bit more of the bench will be seeing the court. Blaze Laronia also checking in. Lions come out a little timeout here. Just under two minutes and 30 seconds left to play in the fourth quarter. And we see all sorts of substitutions. All the starters out of the game right now for the Lions. 
Eamon Martin, the only player in who sees regular time. That's right, and so this will be the squad that'll be trying to go even deeper into the playoffs next year. Eamon Martin fires from three, no good. Bounces off there, rebounded by Daryl Wang. It'll be Tuscola ball. As I'm looking over at the bench, obviously all these players on the Lions look deflated. You know, big loss, obviously. But this is a good team. I have to say, if there's one team that I would want to go down to, you know, it would not be a close game situation where we lose a game that we really should have won. Right, especially in a, in a game of such importance, right, in the regional tournament for the first time, at least... If we do have to lose, at least it will come at the hands of oh, a team that that is going to make a great push into the state tournament. That's right, at least, that's right. at least we're not going down really close to a team that we should not have lost to. Right. Um, right. I know Father Carlisle said that on paper, uh, you know, we should not win this game, but we still had the chance to. And I think that we did play. Um, we definitely played well in some points, especially that second quarter. We really got started, but we just were unable to maintain. Uh, on any of that action that we were doing. Clock winding down now. 59 seconds remaining to play here in the game. Lions with it in their half-court offense. Daniel Bergen over to Matthew Romero. And so as I'm looking out on the court, like I said earlier, this is the team that's going to try to do it next year. Aside from Daryl Wang, everybody on this court, they're all juniors and they'll all be here next year. And these will be the guys that are going to be trying to lead that team deep into, you know, playoff territory next year. We'll see how far they go. Clock winding down really now. Under 30 seconds remaining to play. Jackson Barrett with the ball to the corner now. Warriors just trying to run down the clock. Seven seconds left to play. Clock winds down, and that will do it. So, a 54 to 23 point loss here, 31 point loss to the Tuscola Warriors here. Lions lose it, obviously. This is the final game of their season as with this game over now, that, that'll do it. That'll do it for the Lions season. So, obviously, as always, a disappointing loss. But this one, this one's different. This one almost sort of hits differently just because this is a team that, you know, we weren't supposed to beat on paper. And not that's an excuse to lose, but this is a very good team, a highly competitive team, and one that's going to make a run, a very deep one, into the state playoffs. And so we'll see how far they go. I'm sure we'll be following them. But that'll be the last time you'll see those six seniors on the team take the court for La Salette. So obviously a sad moment for them. But, you know, they put in the work, they put in the time, and this was a good season overall. And what it really showed, I think, is that you don't have to start out the season super good to finish it well. They started out the season in a very rough spot. They started off, I believe, one and six. And ever since then, they've been growing. Ever since after Christmas break, they've really been trying to improve their craft and do everything that they can do to improve and they really have they've they've won so many games um you know some big some big games the arthur game the paris game all those things um and they were able to really come out hard in the playoffs here obviously against tri-county big win 57 to 26 the final score of that one they advanced to this game at Tuscola, a very good team with some highly talented players and so not that the not that the loss is necessarily excusable in that sense but it's one that was predicted uh, and one that's, you know, it's, it's, it's easier to cope with because it wasn't this, this wasn't a game like Tri-County where we, where we really had a, a very good shot at winning the game. So that'll do it for us here tonight. 31-point loss here. The Lions suffer it in the final game of their season. Thank you so much to all of our fans who've watched the games, whether they've come out to visit or whether they've just watched them on the broadcast. We appreciate it very much. For your, your loyalty over the course of the season throughout this game. So thank you so much for watching here again. I'm Joseph Mack and here alongside Kevin Quigley. Have a good night.